All right, back in the 80s, I used to play Car Wars, so this is kind of like a copy of it. Um, then I got some of the expansions to play for it. And my friends and I really, really did like it. There were some quarterly magazines that came out, um, stuff to help you design your vehicle, a compendium, and then a vehicle design sheet so you can design what vehicle you wanted. I even had the wonderful Uncle Albert's Auto Shop and Gunnery. Uh, auto stop and gunnery shop which was this is a hilarious read if you ever read this and this was all great but overall car wars was more complicated than it needed to be but we really did enjoy the game and I haven't played it in since I tried it back in 2006 or 7 or something like that but recently Osprey Games has come out with Gaslands, which we're going to see, is it the same or is it different than Car Wars? All right, Gaslands is a soft cover, perfect bound book. It's around 64 pages. And this is the premise here. There's a post-apocalyptic post Earth. Um, apparently, we've colonized Mars, and then something happened, and Mars invaded Earth and won. And so Earth is kind of like just a desolate place, a post-apocalyptic. So then they put on this uh, TV show, Gaslands, where people all over the world use their cars, motorcycles, tanks, all sorts of vehicles to battle each other. And you can custom your vehicles with guns and rockets and uh, oil slick smoke and all that stuff. So let's take a look inside and see what this game is about. All right, this is our table of contents, kind of like the history that I kind of just told you about. Um, what you'll need to play the vehicles, how the turns work, uh, about setting up your first game to learn the game, vehicle weapons upgrades, playing the game, death race, other scenarios, some advanced rules, some more advanced rules, and some more advanced rules, and some more advanced rules, and an afterthoughts in, and a quick reference in the back. All right, this is basically that timeline I kind of told you about, and about the history of Gaslands, about being some uh, TV show that's shown all over. Um, they kind of talk a little bit about how the game works in about 60 seconds, and then... Um, Basically what you'll need, and a lot of what it is, is just like matchbooks or Hot Wheel cars. So you can go like dollar store and buy these. And then you're, I don't know where you're going to get the little weapons. You're going to have to figure out where to get that to put on those. Um, your dashboards are in the back here with the templates. And I'll just go ahead and show those templates right now. So here's, you'll photocopy these, or I'm pretty sure they'll have it for download that you can uh, then print them off that way instead of scanning them. Um, this is your dashboard where you'll mark what's happening to your vehicle and so forth. They also have, when I get to it, about these templates here. So this is what's in the back, kind of give you an idea of the templates here. So uh, that's the maneuver templates are also back here, which I just showed, like if you're doing a turn or going straight. Dice is D6s. There's also some skid dice, and those are specially made dice, but you can use a D6. Um, well, when I get to that, I'll get to that in a chat. I can't find it right now, but I'll get to what skid dice are when I talk about skid. Table, 3x3 or 4x4 area. Set up your terrain as you would normally do for any skirmish or war game. Um, tokens, hazard tokens which are in the back there. Bases, so what you could do is you could put your vehicles on bases to measure from, and, and that's what this chart is for. Depending upon the vehicle type, this is the size base you'll need. Now, they, you don't have to play with bases if you don't want to. Then they go a little bit more into how you define your vehicle, such as what max gear it can go, what handling it has, how many people, how many points it can take in damage, and so forth. And so that's what you're going to find in this little section. 
All right, this is all about the turn, just kind of how you figure out who's going to do what. Um, there's what's called a gear phase, and basically you just think of it as phase, and there's six of them. And you start with gear one. And anybody's vehicle that's in gear one or higher, up to six, gets to activate one of their, gets to activate their vehicles that turn, uh, that are in that gear. So if you have a car in gear five, you're going to get activating gear phase one, two, three, four, and five. If you uh, have a car in gear two, you're only going to get to activate in gear phase one and two, that vehicle. So what you do is, who's ever got the pole position, um, they get to go first. They get to activate one of their cars that can activate in that phase. Once they're done, it goes clockwise next player, then the next player, then the next player, then it's back to this person and they can activate another vehicle in that phase if that car is allowed. Now, if it's already been activated, it can't be activated again during that phase. Once all the vehicles in that phase can be activated, you go to the next gear phase, start with pole position player. Do they have a vehicle they can activate in phase two? So that means gears two, three, four, five, and six can activate, and it goes around, and you do that through all six phases. When you activate your vehicle, you have to do something with it, and one of the things you can do is movement. And so you select the movement template, which is in the back of the book. So it's one of these templates. Do you want to go straight? Uh, do you want to do some turning, swerve, uh, veer? Um, what these numbers mean is what gear you can do it in. So you can do it in gear one, two, or three, but not four, five, or six. This one you do up to gear four. This one you can only do in five and six. Also, they have, if you go slow, it's a bonus for doing this maneuver. If you do it at this, it's, it's a hazard to do it at this. And so you choose your template, put it in front of your vehicle, then you're going to roll a skid check. And basically, I finally found it. It's right here. These are the skid dice, and you could just use a D6 if you want to. Or, you know, if you got blank dice that you can make your own. Um, if you roll a 1, it's a hazard. 2 is a spin, 3 is a slide, 4 to 6 is a shift, and these are this is really what you want is the shift. Then you apply the results. So for every shift that you rolled, so for every one of these that you rolled, you get to apply one of these. You can discard a hazard, slide, or spin you just rolled. And or you can go up a gear or go down a gear. You can discard a hazard token that your vehicle has on it, uh, and you can just discard that gear die with no problem. Then you gain a hazard token if you have any of those left. That means you may slide and not get where you plan to. And how slide works is, let's say you're going for this hairpin turn here and you, you have to slide. Each maneuver token has one of these on it, these little notches and what that happens is you take this and put this in a notch, and this is where your vehicle ends up. It's where this is at. So instead of making the hairpin turn, you ended up over here. That's how that works. If you're trying to do this one and slid, you ended up over here. So that's about the this, this spin there, or the slide there. Also, your vehicle could spin in that slide area that it slid to. And they also talk about, did you crash anything, like you miscalculated that this is where your vehicle is going to be able to make that turn, but you know what, you slid into something, or, wow, that turn wasn't as sharp as I needed, and I'm going to hit that wall. And it goes through what that is about. Also, they cover terrain. And so that's what's going to be in this section about movement. All right, this section goes through the attack step, and basically you check for distractions, uh, assign crew members to a weapon, uh, declare your target, check range, line of sight, and cover, and enrolls to attack or places dropped weapon template. And dropped weapons are like maybe you're going to put an oil slick down. Then collision may happen, and a defender may roll to evade the attack, and then remo remove hole points. It's pretty simple. It's like most war games. Let's just take the shooting attack. You um, decide which weapon's going to shoot what target. So you got a machine gun on the front of your vehicle. It's going to shoot this vehicle in front of it. And so then you go, is it in range of the weapon? So this movement template is used also for the range. So it's short range, medium, or long. Then the weapon has so many 
dice, like it may be a 4d6 tech. That means you're going to roll four dice. Four or higher is a hit. Six is like two hits. So it does uh, two points of damage instead of one point of damage. So if you roll a four, five, six, the four and five are one point each, and the six is two. So you've done four whole points of damage. The opponent then can try to avoid that attack and make a roll, and then how many he that opponent did not remove is how many whole points you do to the vehicle. And once the vehicle has no whole points, it's taken out of the game. So that's pretty much it. Uh, drop weapons, you, you lay those on the track. Smash attack is talked in movement and depends upon do you T-bone them, uh, smash straight into them head on. This is what you're going to do and that's taken care of in the movement section when you do the collisions. And in explosion attacks, also use the templates back here. That's what these templates are for. Um, so also you can have uh, stuff mounted on the side of the vehicle that can shoot only side to the side, maybe to the front. You have stuff on the front. Maybe you have turreted stuff, stuff in the back. So that's kind of what they're talking about in this section. And it's, it's pretty simple. Roll how many ever dice you get and apply the modifiers, and then for every four or higher is one point, if you roll a six, it's two points. They roll their avoid, whatever's left over is how much damage their vehicle takes. Okay, this section is about the first game, they suggest like 50 points for a game. So you're gonna create your team, and then what vehicles do you want for those points? And they have a cost associated with them, so let's look at this. So if you want a bike, it's gonna cost five, if you want a monster truck, it's going to cost 25. And then it has like max gear, how many hole points, matters how much damage it can take, and its weight, which is more when they collide with each other, what's going to happen, and its handling and so forth. Um, so this is, you choose your vehicle, and there's even tanks in this game. Then you can buy upgrades for it, like armor plating, um, nitro boosters, and stuff like that for extra cash. And then you can also, what weapons do you want? So we got some weapons like uh, 125 millimeter cannon, arc lightning, pro projector, um, explosive rams, uh, fire, a glue dropper, and so forth. So they got a lot of weapon choices and they're gonna have a cost associated with them too. And so you have those 50 points. Uh, what vehicles do you wanna run? As you see here, a tank <laughs> and then, um, what equipment do you want to put on that vehicle you've chosen? And then they talk about uh, playing a game. Which scenario do you want to do? And that's kind of the scenario section. There was one which, um, like the death race, which is running around a track, it kind of looks like. Uh, there are also some scenarios in here, and there's one that was a zombie something I saw. Saturday Night Live. Um, Arena of Death Zombie Bash. I don't know. I'll we'll zoom into this one to see. I'll let you see what this scenario is. You can you can pause the uh, video and read it more. But this is going to be Zombie Smash. Kind of give you an idea of one of the scenarios that you can do in this game. Now we're heading to the advanced rules, and this one has to do with perks. Um, I figured this is more like a campaign, so you're going to get some sponsors, and if you get a sponsor you get some special things to happen. So, like uh, Rutherford, you would get military hardware, well-stocked, Mighty is Right, and televised Carnage. However, let's say you're, um, oh, I like this one, Slime. I don't know what that does. Live, you get Live, Live Fast, and Pinball, if you're sponsored by Slime. Then there's some driver perks you can get for your driver, so you can get some uh, skills. And the war rig, which um, talks about a semi-trailer. What, how, how the rules work for a semi-trailer when you want to get to that advanced section of the game. Also adding seasons into the game. Audience can vote. Um, a lot of stuff reminds me of Car Wars. You try to get, uh, like, doing things to get audience to cheer you on. You get these points and it allowed you more money to buy stuff for your vehicles. 
And then here's the section about afterthoughts. Um, what's nice is they will come out with uh, dice and templates and all that at uh, gaslands.com. Um, so they're, they're giving you some ideas here, also some of the things you do like organized plays, changing the scale. Um, here's your quick, quick reference so you don't have to go looking through the book. And then our templates. So your dashboards, your movement and shooting templates. And that is it. So what do I think of Gaslands? Um, when I got this in the mail, I was like, oh yeah, I really want to play this because I really did enjoy Car Wars. But looking at it now, it's a lot more complicated than it needs to be and it's hard to get people into Car Wars uh, because of the complexity. This, I think, uh, gets rid of the, a lot of the complexity in the game. I mean, it makes it where I think kids could play this game. Uh, and also being able to just use the matchbox style cars. I mean, you can go to dollar store and buy four or five of them and you almost have your whole, uh, miniatures right there. Um, the only thing I'm not sure about is rolling those dice. And the only way you can shift gears is if you get those, uh, speedometer things on those skid dice. That's the only way you can shift gears. And one thing I liked about Car Wars was you can decide to shift up or down. And sometimes you can sh double shift down, you know, skip a gear or skip a gear to go up, but you're going to damage your car a little bit. This kind of took that out of it. Um, but you know what? It may make the game a little more exciting. And also that fog of war is in the game doing that. So overall, I am really happy that this game came out. I, I, I want to play it this weekend. I want to go to the the dollar store and just buy some cars and just have a little demo game set up because I think this game could be picked up very, very quickly by people. What do you want to do? Oh, I want to move over here. Which template? Boom, boom. Oh, okay. Oh, I skidded. No, I didn't. I made it through. I'm going to shoot now. So I would say give if you like Car Wars or like the idea of uh, Death Race 2000 type thing or an arena of cars with missiles and tanks in there and semis and motorcycles give this game a try